Purastades? Que tal? It's about as far as I get. So, <laughs> so how's your week been? Your past week? Pasada uh, semana. Yeah. Good? See? Sí? Good? Good. So, very nice to be back with you. Did you all get my email last week? We, we got the email, but there was a problem because we, some of us, we couldn't see the, the attachment. You couldn't see the attachment? No, so I finally saw it like on my computer, but when I check on my computer, but if you check on your, on your telephone or in a iPad, iPad it doesn't You couldn't see it? No. Was there nothing that the office could do here? Because it's coming now, from... Now we have now you have a, a printed version. It's good to have an electronic version. If you have a problem like that again in the future, go to the office because they're sending all my emails to you. I don't have, I don't have direct access to your email. Okay, so it's not my fault. Uh, so just go and have a word with them and, and try and get access to it. Um, in terms of um, the assignment that I said to you last week, which was to send me your, your resume, and a few of you have done that, I, I'll keep the books open for you, so if you still want to continue to send me your resumes for, um, I, I think I, rep a, I replied to you, yeah? I have a one brain here with me. Can, Can you send, yeah, could you send it to me electronically? Okay, I have it in PDF, if it's not a problem. Sorry? I have it in PDF, not in Word. PDF. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And you've, you've all got my, um, my email address, yes. yes? Okay, so send it to me, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll respond to you individually over the next, ah, okay. over the next few days. And then if you want to have time with me, uh, we can schedule that uh, next week. Uh, I'm here on, on the 5th, but I probably would schedule individual time when I have, when I have more of a period of, of work here in the new year. So we'll, we'll just keep this one boiling along, and uh, we'll, we will... Um, refer to it in, in a lot of detail because having your, your resume prepared or nearly prepared, come down the front a bit, or nearly prepared or ready to go, I think is just a vital part of uh, all of the work that you're doing at the moment. Did any of you have a chance to think through the um, elevator speech? How many of you thought it through? Your three of you are prepared? Prepared as an exaggeration? <laughs> <laughs> so three of you might be confident enough to try it out this afternoon. Maybe? OK, well, good, because I only had one this morning who was prepared to try it out. Um, but that, that was good in itself. Um, what, I'd, what I'd like to do with you this afternoon is to talk to you about the whole realm of storytelling and communication skills. It comes out of last week very, very naturally. Last week was about personal reflection. It was about you understanding yourself. It was about you seeing where your strengths are in terms of skills, character traits, what you wanted to do in the world, and the impact you wanted to make on the world as well. So that is a real foundation that you can rely upon when it comes to your resume, when it comes to the elevator speech, when it comes to your branding, when it comes to your website as well. So these are really important things that you're doing and thinking about at the moment. Am I speaking too fast? Is that is this okay? Shout if, if I am. Um, and a lot of this, in pulling all of that together, a lot of it is going to rely upon your ability to tell your story. And telling your story and storytelling is something that, as human beings, we are really hardwired to understand and appreciate. It's hardwired, that's a phrase you use, is it? Hardwired, it's, it's in our genes. It's, it's, it's something that we, we understand intuitively. Does that explain it? Yeah. No? It, it's, it's something that is muy importante. Um, because we understand the world through stories. And if you think about the stories that we all love, I mean, we start with the Bible. It contains some of the greatest stories of all time. Uh, Cervantes, Shakespeare, Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's fantastic storytelling. Uh, the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Iliad. Um, we love stories. And we often understand difficult subjects, difficult data, 
difficult things to explain when somebody actually gives it to you as a story. It just, it just comes together. A story allows us to, to have it in our memory. It stays there. Because we've seen it with all the colors that our imaginations want to see a story in, want to see um, facts and figures and, and data. It, it becomes part of us. So what I'll do this, this afternoon with you is uh, I'm going to test you out on your storytelling ability. So I'm going to ask every single one of you to, to tell a story about yourself. It can be about anything you want. The greatest experience of your life, when you experienced uh, music for the first time, your first love, whatever it is, just tell us your story. Mustn't last for more than three minutes. I would like you to be videoed when you tell your story. Either your own video or somebody else who has a video here. This morning decided they all videoed it and they all went just like you, <gasps> like that. And it is, <gasps> because seeing yourself on video is awful. Yeah. It is awful. And yet, you will learn more from watching yourself than anything I can say. Because you're understanding yourself. You're seeing yourself there in the mirror. So that's very important. So if you don't have uh, uh, an iPhone or a smartphone with you, find somebody who can do it for you. This morning's uh, group decided that they would put all of their videos on um, WhatsApp and that they would circulate it in that way. So you can do the same. I, I don't care, but you need to have access to those. As I say, your, your talk should last not longer than three minutes. And I'm going to ask all of you to comment on the storytelling and on the presentation of the story. So all of you will get involved with that. And then I'll make my own comments as well. And then when we've learned some of the basic techniques of storytelling and presentation, I'm going to ask those three brave people who put their hands up to say that they are prepared to do um, uh, an elevator speech. I'm going to ask them to do their 30 seconds. Um, and I, I predict we will spend more time on the 30 seconds than we will in preparing the three minutes. It's really difficult to do 30 seconds. So how does that sound? Yeah? And then we'll talk about uh, uh, next Monday. But I think that this, what we're doing at the moment, which is all, it's all going to be focusing upon you, who you are, then communications, the elevator speech. And I think it naturally should lead you into networking. Do you know what I mean by networking? Yes? No? Networking? What is it? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's more than establishing contacts. It's, it's actually creating relationships. Mm -hmm. Creating relationships. Uh, when I think about my, my own network, uh, I have a network in America and I have a network in Europe. And it's thousands now. And it, it would be. I've been around a long time. So you'd expect it to be thousands. And you need to be establishing your network. So I thought that next week, if we do networking coming out of all of the communication stuff, uh, we might do some role playing. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about uh, an assignment for you, which uh, is to make it a bit real and to ask you to research the board members of the Rio Sophia School of Music. It's on their website. I'd, it's never been an easier time to research people than going online, go to Google, Wikipedia if you need to, um, and just seeing who, who they are and their backgrounds. And then next week, I thought we, when we have finished doing uh, the elevator speech, we could actually do some role playing where some of you could be the board members and other of you could be yourselves. And then when we've done that, we'll switch it round. Because it's a fascinating way of trying out techniques of getting yourself out there, feeling confident, making mistakes, having some, some successes, 
but all within a very protected environment. You haven't got to worry. You can make as many mistakes as you want. You can say the wrong things to all the right people, and it doesn't matter. This is the place to make mistakes and to learn from them. How did that all sound OK? So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to build each week. So every week is not its own uh, meeting, its own talk, its own lecture. Every week relates to the next week, and it builds. So what I would like to do, because uh, we're about to do something quite physical um, in terms of presenting, is I'd like you all to go to the round to that area there. And I'd like to do just some warm-up exercises with you. And I'd like to ask our singers to help me with that. OK, just in a, in a circle. Come closer. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to do a very simple breathing exercise. You, how many singers do we have? Singer? Just three. Three of you. OK, so help me with this, because you know much more about breathing and diaphragms than, than I do. I just, I'm an amateur at this, but I'm a very interested amateur. OK, so well, let's do, and, and for you instrumentalists, do you all do exercises before you play? A little bit, yeah? yeah. A little bit? Yeah, Not? Arms and That's good. Yeah. Do all of you? A little bit? <laughs> OK. I, I do advise you. It has nothing to do with entrepreneurship. It has everything to do with survival. Uh, <laughs> I, I do really recommend that I, I see all of you as athletes. An athlete, when they're doing the 100 meters, would never run the 100 meters or train for the 100 meters until they'd warmed up. They would never stop training and then not warm down because they got all the muscles going. And they need to do that physically. What you do is intensely physical. And I think that you need many of the same disciplines as an athlete. Because later on in your career, and I've seen this having run orchestras, uh, you'll, you'll have physical problems. It's inevitable. I mean, holding a violin is not a natural thing. We weren't born holding a violin. It's, it's unnatural. We weren't born playing the piano. It's unnatural. And so we have to overcome that. So this is just a little bit of uh, uh, fun, really, to warm up, to get part of our brains working that are not working at the moment, not because you don't have them in your brain. It's just that you are in student mode. And I want you to be in child mode. Okay, so let's. This is my breathing ex exercise, and you, the three of you it can improve on this. So this is mine. You're going to breathe from the diaphragm. Wind players, you know how to do this. String players do not, and I'm a string player. So I want you to do this one. So nice and see, see singers. They do this lovely thing with their hands like this. They're always in neutral mode. I don't know where you have always picked that up. Well, every singer does that. It's all neutral. Very. Very neutral here. So you're going to breathe from here. And this is my exercise. It's this. You're going to breathe in through your nose, and you're going to breathe out through your, through your mouth. So <laughs> OK? OK, I'll, I'll give you the beat, all right? One, two, three. Three, three. Ah. Bum, 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 bum. Again. Bum, 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 bum. Brum, bum, 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 bum. Great. OK. Singers, what exercises would you do for breathing? Just general relaxation. Uh, fire breathing, but that's a pranayama yoga thing. <laughs> it's active inhale, active exhale. Do you want to try that? OK. Yeah, just, just demonstrate. You make a little constriction behind the back of your nose. And it's active, it's not just letting the air in, you actually suck the air in and you push the air out. OK, OK. Uh, follow your leader. <laughs> Feel it here. It's 
can go on for a few Great. Do you, do, you, do you have one? Yes. It's good for the blood. In, in four? Ah. Um, keep the air in eight and push out the air in ten. Okay, demonstrate. Bueno. Can we all do that one? This way, is, this is really, you might be thinking, well, well, I'm a string player, I don't need to do any of that. But what we're doing today is we're going to be presenting, we're going to be talking. And if your breathing isn't the way it should be when you talk, you get nervous. When you get nervous, you get tense, and you'll appear to be nervous, which is the last thing you want to do on God's, God's earth. And then, you won't come over as confident. So breathing is the foundation for all of this. So let's follow your lead. Very good. You have one? Very good. Thank you for those. Thank you for adding to my repertoire. Uh, let's just do a quick game. Again, getting different parts of the brain to, uh, to function. So each of you think of a, a name. It can be a boy's name, it can be a girl's name, name of your parents, name of your family, it doesn't, really doesn't matter. But just a different name, and I'm going to shout a name to you. Different name, different name, different name, different name. Okay? Henry. Anna. No, to him. Going round. Me. So start again. Hold on. So, Henry. Anna. Maria. Arturo. Pilar. Nicola. Ernesto. Nina. David. Jose. Douglas. Francisco. Faster. Cristina. Anna. Antonio. Stop. This this time when I say stop, go around the other way. All right? Different names. Okay? Antonio. Sarah. Beatrice. Douglas. Marta. Carlos. Other way. Mariana. A ver. Antonio. Carlos. Daniel. Maria. José. Horacio. 
Antonio. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so just yeah, this again, this is getting you to limber up a little bit mentally as well. That actually looked as if it was more difficult than playing the Rite of Spring. It wasn't though, was it? It was just you needed to get used to it and just use different parts of your brain. So staying in this formation, I'd like uh, somebody to give the first uh, talk for three minutes, or not lasting longer than three minutes. So, Alejandra, why don't you be the first person? Have you got a camera? <laughs> yeah? Why don't you get your camera? Somebody will <laughs> shoot that for you. And the person doing the camera also should do the time. And when you get to two and a half minutes, and if they haven't finished, say, or... <laughs> Raise your hand. Yep. You can fly anywhere. Has it got anything that's in your mind? I am not putting any structure on it at all. I'm not making any requests. It can be anything you want. Okay. And introduce yourself. Are you good? So introduce yourself. Bueno, soy Alejandra Cuña, soy colombiana y soy cantante, mezzo soprano. Y me gustaría contarles algo de, de mi historia, de cómo llegué a ser músico, a estudiar música y a escoger eh, esto como una profesión en mi vida. Eh, desde muy niña estuve, era bandolista, estuve siempre metida en el folclore colombiano, tocaba eh, en varios grupos, tenía... Um, un profesor muy bueno, mucho, mucho mayor que yo. Eh, y cuando salí de, del colegio, eh, iba a estudiar psicología, pero nunca fui a la, a la universidad porque no, no quería. Entonces, después de hacer muchas pruebas a universidades, mmm, empecé a prepararme eh, porque sabía que exigían mucho. Y mis padres no contaban con muchos recursos para ayudarme. Y yo vivía en un pueblo y no era tan fácil porque había que pensar en ir. Y, y cuando me mudé con una tía tuve un accidente muy grave en, en Colombia. Todos sabían, una tía había hecho un esfuerzo tremendo para ayudarme a pagar el primer semestre. Y cuando tuve este accidente, eh, tuve que regresarme a Arbeláez, a mi pueblo, y pensé que no iba a poder lograrlo. Pero gracias a ese accidente, que pensaba que era muy malo, eh, se hizo una red de personas que querían ayudarme y apostar por mi talento, y finalmente logré volver a emprender el camino en la universidad, y en unas condiciones mucho mejor. Así que seguí, eh, empecé a estudiar pedagogía musical y eso, bueno, no fue solo el, el único cambio, porque cuando ya estaba en, eh, en el séptimo semestre de pedagogía musical, eh, descubrí que amaba el canto y me dediqué a ser cantante. Ok. Espera, espera. Brava, brava. You did extreme. Brilliant. Couldn't do better than that. What do you think? Do you like it? Yes. What did you like? I like the... She's pressed very naturally. Mm -hmm. Very natural, I agree with you. What else? She's engaging. Yes, very engaging. Why is she engaging? She always searches for a focus point. Mm -hmm. And it's not always the same. So mm -hmm. she keeps everyone drawn to her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. What else? What did you think? No, oh, hold on. I think the same. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely the same. Uh, you felt the same? Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Um, well, I think it was interesting what she was saying. So. so the story was good? Yeah, yeah the story and the okay. way she was telling. What did you think? I like the tempo that she used. Yes. Absolutely right. This, you, this, is, this is a really key technique, which is she established a pacing and she established a rhythm, mm -hmm. which she could come in and out of, but you were, you were aware that there was a set 
rhythm. And that was a rhythm where she was confident of communicating clearly to you. And within that rhythm, she was not afraid of silence. Only once did you go, mmm, to fill in the silence. Because we're all very, if we're, if, if we're not saying something or making a noise, we think, oh, it's something wrong. But silence is incredible, because silence can be used for emphasis. Over and over. I'm making a point here again. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This was good. Good use of, of silence. She was she balanced like this. Was that good or was that bad? I'd be more comfortable. Bad. So how could you have made yourself more comfortable? Because this, for me, is it's putting pressure on your top of your thigh. Mm -hmm. And that uh, if you stayed like that for half an hour, you'd be in pain. Yes. So what could you have done instead? What about moving when you speak? If you, if you think about this as being a little, yes, and then think of it as a little garden, and you're just walking the garden just a little bit. You mentioned that she made contact with you all. She made contact with her eyes, apart from you, for some reason. You didn't, you didn't connect with him very much. This side, you were a little bit blind on. This side, you loved, OK? <laughs> but it's. Very close to me. No? I, I know this, but you, 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 <laughs> one, one time she looked at no, me, but not very much. Yes. 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 For the, for the angle. Don't take it personally. Okay. Okay. The eyes are how we assess the world. Everyone that we deal with, we look into their eyes and we can tell whether they're good people or bad people somehow. We're able to tell whether they're honest people or dishonest people, sincere or insincere. We just know that, whether they're confident or not confident. We can just see it in their eyes. It's part of our animal nature. She also did something else, which was she used her face. She's an actress. She was using her look already. <laughs> and this. The hands, she has no, you wait till we see an instrumentalist in a moment. I'm exactly the same. An instrumentalist will not know what to do with their hands and their arms. How did these get here? They were not here this morning, and now I have to deal with them. They are awful. Please make them go away. And you end up doing that, which is a bit like the British royal family. So you can't really do that. You didn't. You did some lovely emphasizing movements with the hands. And then the face was in the story as well. So the face became part of the charm of the story. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What else? You did very well. Bravo. Bravo. Okay. Take that. I'm going to do the singers. <laughs> yeah. They're putting the level up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, soy Pablo Martínez, uh, soy tenor, soy colombiano. Y les voy a contar la historia de mi peor día dando un concierto. Eh, fue el, el año pasado. Teníamos un concierto en Úbeda con un grupo de cantantes. Y el tren salió a Úbeda a las 10 de la mañana. Y como siempre, yo me levanté tarde. Además de eso, yo tiendo a tener mala memoria y no me acordaba muy bien dónde quedaba Atocha y yo estaba convencido, entonces nada, tenía mi traje, tenía todas mis cosas, me monté en el metro y me fui a la dirección contraria entonces cuando me di cuenta, me bajé y lo volví a tomar, ya era muy tarde y había perdido el tren el concierto era en la noche, entonces tenía mucho tiempo y me di cuenta que había muchos buses que salían para Úbeda, entonces estaba tranquilo entonces dije, tengo todo el día, puedo hacer un par de vueltas de banco y eso fue lo que hice Vine a la escuela, vine a estudiar, fui al banco y hice mis vueltas. Ya era sobre la hora y, y fui a la estación de bus. Compré mi tiquete, todo perfecto, me monté en el bus. En el bus había un ruidito todo el tiempo del viaje. Y yo estaba tranquilo porque yo asumí que era el gancho de mi traje contra la parte donde reposan las cosas. Pero hubo un momento en que yo dije, bueno, revisemos el traje, o sea, está ahí, pero en una de las paradas, el traje no estaba. Lo había dejado en la estación de luz. 
Esto, valga aclarar, que eran como las 5 de la tarde y ya estaba a punto de llegar a Úbeda. Úbeda, con todo el respeto, pero es un miserable pueblo así de grande donde no hay nada. Y había un Zara en todo Úbeda que estaba al otro lado de donde yo tenía que dar el concierto. Entonces llegué a Úbeda, corrí a ese Zara, compré el primer traje que encontré, un par de zapatos, corrí y llegué y di mi concierto. Ese es mi peor vida, dando un concierto. Very good. I mean, very, very good. Comments? Did you all like it? I think it was good, yeah. What was good about it? Uh, he was quite focused. He was taking his time as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe he was a little, like, stayed in the same place. Little stayed? Yeah. Okay. Physically, yeah. he he adopted. He was very comfortable in in. Yeah. It's very here, so I could see a straight line coming, coming through you to to the floor, which it was that gave him a lot of confidence. So, if we're encouraging him to move about a, a bit, we have to see how comfortable he might he might be with that. What other comments? He expressed very natural also. Again, he was very much the actor, and he characterized his story. He went into voices. He used different voices. It was really lovely. So characteriza characterization within his story uh, gave it humor, m gave it color. Um, I think one of the most important things to use in any story is a little bit of humor. Because if you make somebody laugh, or even smile, they like you. They're very comfortable with you. We don't laugh and smile with people we feel threatened by, or we don't feel comfortable by. So it's a way of growing a relationship to use humor in that way. Mm -hmm. So I thought that you, you did extremely well with that. Again, he used his face. I was part of the acting. Uh, there was uh, an instrumentalist this morning I was working with, and he was very nervous when he, he stood up. And his eyes were really good, and his face was made of wood. It was like, it was just, it was carved. Never, never moved, never moved. Do you have any tension at all? No, the thing is, I like to move, but I had everyone in an angle. So when I move on stage, normally it's to address a certain mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of, this, of the mm -hmm. public. But I had everyone pretty much at the same distance, so I didn't need to move that much. OK. OK. You did very well. Thank you. Please. <laughs> if you'd like to introduce yourself. la historia de por qué hoy día quiero estar sola en la vida y por qué no existe el amor para mí. Los tres peores años de mi vida los viví junto a una persona a la cual amé con todo el corazón. ¿Pero qué pasó? Bueno, la relación comenzó porque yo era la profesora en una universidad. Yo, profesora, el alumno. Un chico mucho menor que yo. ¿Y cómo me enamoró? Yo caminaba, nunca estaba pendiente de él, pero empezó a enviarme cartas de amor. Carta de amor a la antigua. En estos días, ¿quién hace carta de amor a una persona? Carta de amor escrita, cartas de amor por Facebook, carta de amor por WhatsApp. Pues, me conquistó. Empezamos a salir y para mí todo era gloria. Para mí todo era felicidad. Además, era un noviazgo escondida. Porque no podían saber en la universidad que yo era la novia de un estudiante. Así que, bueno, terminé mi trabajo en esta universidad y vine a vivir acá a España. Así que empecé una relación a distancia. La peor relación que ustedes pueden tener es a distancia, ¿o no? Así que, bueno, yo, enamorada, confié en que esto iba a prosperar y que iba a ser el amor de mi vida, que me iba a casar, que iba a tener hijos. Y empezaron los celos, los malditos celos siempre. Así que siempre pegada al WhatsApp, siempre pegada al WhatsApp, porque si no respondía a alguno de sus mensajes, él pensaba que yo estaba con otra persona. 
Además, era un chico mucho menor y sentía mucha inseguridad sobre una persona que ya le llevaba un par de años más. Bueno, así pasó, pasó el tiempo, pasaron unos meses y vino a, a España a visitarme. Y yo estaba feliz. Pero ¿qué pasó? Sus celos, sus malditos celos, todos los días. Todos los días estando conmigo y yo estando con él, todas las 24 horas del día. ¿Y qué pasó? El primer maltrato. El primer maltrato por celos. ¿Y qué pasó? Lo permití. Pasó la segunda vez, el segundo maltrato, y lo permití. Permitía que me, que me agrediera física y verbalmente. ¿Quién, quién, ¿Quién puede permitir eso? Yo criticaba eso de las mujeres, pero cuando uno está enamorado uno no tiene límites, uno lo piensa. Hasta que el final de la relación, a los tres años, donde yo estaba decidida a entregarlo todo, a pesar de todo lo que había pasado, me dice, ¿sabes? Es que estoy confundido y ya no te quiero. Creo que debemos dejar las cosas así. Estuve un año devastada, sola, anulada. Y bueno, por este momento, por eso estoy sola. Y ya está. Bravo. Comments. Excellent. <laughs> I really loved it because it was so. Uh, she had a lame autism, which was celos, and that's jealousy. Mm -hmm. And 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 that was very very nice how she mentioned it a couple of times, and then she made she asked questions <coughs> to us too, so mm -hmm. we participated in her speech. So uh, I loved it. I loved it too. What what else? I think we feel engaged with the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Felt like a good story. What I could understand of the story felt like a great, <laughs> really great story. Yeah? What did you think? I didn't understand anything. <laughs> Except it's difficult actually not to understand her because this was so physical. Yeah. Yes. This was so physical. I mean, she could be, have, have been speaking in Icelandic and you would have had some idea what the story was about. What, what's, what I loved about this um, was it felt to me that the story had, a, had an arc, it had a structure. So it had a beginning and it had a middle and she finished it as well and she was finishing it really well. And it's very, very difficult to finish anything. Mm -hmm. Normally people sort of keep talking until, uh, well, um, I'll look at the time. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, uh, okay, um, pff, uh, I think I've finished now. Um, and it, so it's not a cadence. <laughs> and what you need is you need to finish in D major. You need to finish like Beethoven 9. You need to finish like Marlowe 1. You, you need that big finish, that peroration we call it, that conclusion that takes people with you and they are inspired by what you have to say. I know that she's a singer, but there's something that you can all learn from her, including the singers, which was how many notes did she use in her voice when she spoke to you. She didn't sing to you, but she spoke to you. How many notes did she use? Quite a bit. A lot. How many? These three. Three. These three. I, th I counted seven. Because she went, she went quite high, really quite high, that, that sort of high, and she was very, she could do, she could do the bass notes as well. So this, when you use everyone, you have got notes in your voice. You've got notes in your voice. You all have notes. And when you use the notes in your voice, when you are speaking, it gives color. And if you give what you say color, it's more interesting. It's more compelling. It's more convincing. You all know Bill Clinton, the, yeah, of the husband of, <laughs> the person who should have been uh, president of America, yes. but never mind, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> she still won the popular And that doesn't seem to ma matter very much these that's days. True, yeah. yeah, it's, it's twice, th yeah. twice that's happened in, in recent years. Anyway, it's, it's not about politics. Um, Bill Clinton, who is probably the best American orator of recent times. You've all seen him give speeches. I mean, he's compelling, he uses his voice, he's convincing. He went to a singing teacher. He did not go to a speech maker. He went to a singing teacher to see how he could use the notes in his voice. 
After today, when you watch people on television give speeches, it will be something quite different for you. You will start analysing how they present and how they use their voices. It, it's, you, you, you'll become aware of, of these things. This was, and although you appear to be the most reluctant of any of the speakers I've had today, you seemed reluctant, this was the most intuitive speech presentation and it was as if you loved us all and you couldn't wait to share your story with us. I didn't understand the, the last part that he said. That, I, that you yeah, couldn't, that you couldn't <laughs> wait. I'm, I'm, I'm praising you. Okay. Um, now if you have this quality of present, if you have this quality of presentation and let's say you're in front of an audience. They love you before you open your, your mouth to sing a note. That's for certain. Or they love you even more when you announce your encores. But when you sit in front of people who you want to invest in an idea and you speak like that and you tell your story like that, it's compelling. People will want to support you. If you uh, are being interviewed if you are in front of uh, people who are influential and you speak like this, it will open doors, windows, ceilings, roofs. <laughs> really. Brava. Thank you. What's your instrument? Piano. Piano. Okay. Uh, what time? At five. Okay, I'm going to put you on after him. Do you prefer in Spanish or English? Whatever is natural to you, you probably feel better yes. in Spanish. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's fine. It's very good for me learning Spanish. <laughs> you can say your story in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, soy Alberto Álvarez, soy pianista y os voy a relatar una historia que bueno, me pasó recientemente en un concierto de piano que di el pasado jueves en Jaén. Bueno, pues fue un concierto que preparé durante tiempo porque elegí un repertorio muy difícil, con obras muy virtuosísticas y difíciles de, de memorizar. Total, que cuando llegué a, al concierto estaba preparándome, faltaban cinco minutos para, para salir a tocar. Mi padre vino al, al camerino y me dijo, hay bastante gente, Alberto, pero la media de edad es de unos 70 años. Y dije, bueno, no es extraño en conciertos de música clásica, así que bueno, habrá que hacerlo bien igualmente. Decidí contar eh, una breve descripción de las piezas que iba a interpretar para que la gente pues, no se sintiera demasiado aburrida. Y, y bueno, pues el concierto transcurrió bien. Al final del primer movimiento de la sonata de Beethoven, la gente pues, empezó a aplaudir. Pues, y en ese momento, bueno, os pues, ha pasado a todos vosotros seguro, pues, ¿qué haces como intérprete? Pues pones cara de que, de que muchas gracias, pero tengo que seguir tocando. Y pues, seguí tocando, pero al final del concierto me pasó una cosa que nunca me pasó antes. Y era durante una hora de, de list, muy difícil y muy virtuosística, y es que en mitad de la pieza, en el clímax, la parte más importante, la gente empezó a aplaudir. O sea, yo no había parado de tocar, no, no, no daba pie a que la gente aplaudiera, pero empezó a aplaudir. Y por 10 segundos o algo así, o sea, no fue un aplauso breve, y la gente, bravo, 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 bravo. En ese momento pensé, pues, lo tengo que estar haciendo bastante bien para que la gente esté aplaudiendo antes de que termine el concierto. Pero bueno, traté de no perder la concentración y, y terminé. Lo más gracioso de todo esto es que cuando justo terminé la pieza, por supuesto la gente aplaudió. Pero el organizador encendió enseguida la luz del, del escenario y la gente empezó a salir. Y mi novia, que estaba en el escenario, le estaba diciendo a la gente «Seguid aplaudiendo, seguid aplaudiendo, que ha preparado más cosas y puede tocar más para vosotros si le aplaudís». Pero era demasiado tarde y, y la gente se fue del concierto. <risa> o sea que, bueno, esa fue la historia de, de mi concierto. Gracias. So, how did he do? What did you think? You liked it? Oh, you liked it too, but the tempo maybe too fast to move. For me, it was too, 
too fast, but yeah. is that because we don't speak Spanish very well? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I agree because I am uh, a bit ner uh, pretty nervous person, so yeah? I tend to run. Okay, do you do that when you play? Sometimes, yes. Yeah? Because yeah. that's often when you, very yeah, you... Yeah, you get nervous and you play something too, too fast. Yeah. yeah. What else? A mí me gustó mucho que en las en, en partes importantes de la historia enfatizaste con el tono de la voz y con tus gestos. Mm -hmm. eh, very important part she um, he emphasized uh, with the with the tone of his voice. She said. Mm -hmm. He has a good voice. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't he? He could yeah. be a singer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? <laughs> no, I'd say that. That's. I'm sure you're a great pianist. But you, I say that with a, a, this tremendous compliment because this this was well projected. I thought that we were going to have to do some projection, but but no, you've got absolutely everything there. This is this is convincing. What else? How was he using his hands? He was quite good using gestures, so. but he goes back a bit to this. He, he was no, doing. No, because it's like a safe position. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't look unnatural, but it, it comes back yeah. several the, times. I, I agree with you. I, I think this is, this is where you nearly were. This is sort of neutral, and, and you, you did a lot of that, and it would come back here, a lot of this, and come back there. And then it almost went there, which means that you were feeling really uncomfortable. And it's funny, again, as animals, we pick up on all of this. And we, we look to see when you're uncomfortable, when you're comfortable, when you're confident, when you're not confident. And these tiny little glimpses into our behavior, into our psyche, uh, we don't even think about it. We just pick it up. We smell it. Yeah? But you would, I think, really good. Really good. OK. So he's got, he's got to go to a class, so we're going to get him on next. Who's recording you? <laughs> Introduce yourself. So, uh, I'm Francisco. Uh, I'm a flutist and um, I'm from Portugal. I will tell you a little story about my first experience playing in orchestra. Uh, which is my dream, and I found a lot of uh, musicians. And so I was um, I was in Portugal in my hometown, and um, I was 15 years old. And uh, someone called me from from orchestra to play Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. And uh, every flutist and woodwind player knows it is very hard, even for intonation, for getting it together. It is very hard piece. And they called me to prepare one week of rehearsals and uh, two concerts. But I didn't know I was very young. I was 15 years and almost everyone in orchestra had like 30, 40, 50 more. And um, I was there for first rehearsal, it was okay. From the first rehearsal to the last, it was everything okay. But I didn't know they had a private joke in the orchestra. And, uh, and after the general rehearsal, we went, we went to dinner, all orchestra, and um, someone uh, cut me all of my solos with the CD <laughs> from the, pa the paper. And uh, I start the first concert with the 15 years, and I open my score, an original score, and there was no solos, and everyone knows about the woodwind solo, everyone, everyone together, with a woodwind solo in the second movement, and uh, I was scared because I was 15, and uh, even more scared, but everything went good, and uh, I was very lucky. I don't know how I did it, and everyone was laughing at the end. And um, they told me, now you can join us. <laughs> and, uh, they called me again some months before, uh, some, sorry, some months after, and they did the same. <laughs> <laughs> this is my orchestral story. Yes. My very good. So, how did you do? What do you think? <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> yes. It's a frightening story. <laughs> At first, I think he was... Uh, he... Uh, I don't know how to express that. Um, in the end, he was more natural and more mm -hmm. connected with us that 
the mm -hmm. beginning. Yes. Did he make contact with you all? Yes. Yeah? So you felt that you started to know him and his story well? Yes. What about his face? How did he use his face? He now he's using it. For me. Yeah. Yep. It was, for most of it, it was wood. <laughs> right at the end when you thought, oh, I've finished now. <laughs> 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 now, now look, isn't, isn't it a great face? He's got, he's got all, all these characterizations in, in his face which he can use. Because if you use all of that, it, it just, it's going to mean much, much, much more. And you'll be, you'll be far more compelling. What else? La historia tuvo inicio, un punto de un nudo y un desenlace. Lo que él había hablado en el país, por favor. Que tuvo un comienzo y un desenlace. Sí, lo que él estructura. Es pecho. Mhm. Like a middle part and then. Sí. How did he end? Did he end well? Yes, he connected with the story. And with a little, little bit of humour as yeah. well. Yeah. I, I would have liked a little bit more humour as you tell this story, because it, it's a terrifying story, but in, in being terrifying, it also has this humorous element, because none of us in this room ever want to be in that situation, do we? <laughs> <laughs> to be exposed like that. But you did very well. Thank you. And you now you need to go, I know. OK, I hope to see you next week. So who would like to go next? I think we have chosen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it in English because... Okay. Uh, sure. Because uh, usually I have to talk in English and then in concert, so then I can practice. Okay. Can I say the code, right? Ah, well. Solo hacerle así. So introduce yourself and you're in. Okay. My name is Javier Ramirez. I'm a pianist. And I'm going to tell my story now. It was uh, 26th of June. Sunday in the afternoon, and I did. And there was a concert that, that night in Concert Joao, and I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go because you know one of those Sunday nights that you just want to be at home, rest, relax. But then I received a call from my mother, and then she said, "You have to go. You never know what can happen. So you you should definitely go and and, and try to enjoy the concert." So I went, and that night was uh, Aldo Ciccolini uh, playing, and the concert was great. After the concert, um, I met the manager of the concert, and he spoke Spanish. So we started talking, and then he invited me for dinner. So that Sunday, 26th of June, I went to, to have dinner with Aldo Ciccolini, the manager, and other very important people. So it was very nice to meet interesting people. Uh, there, there was uh, Hans von Manen, a very important choreographer, and, and other kind of people. The same night, at 1 in the morning, I, I, of course, I went back to Utrecht, I went back home. And when I was in the station, um, I, I was waiting for the train. And uh, suddenly one guy came and sat next to me. And then we started talking. And I started saying, you know, the, about the special night, what happened, and then we introduced each other. We talked. He was also going to Utrecht. So uh, we talked the whole, the whole uh, journey to Utrecht. We talked 30 minutes continuously. We exchanged uh, uh, telephone numbers. And then uh, we saw each other. That was a Sunday. So we saw each other on a Friday. We saw each other on Friday. Then we saw each other on Saturday, Sunday, and every single day until I went back to uh, Venezuela. And then uh, we started talking by Skype twice a day. And uh, it turned out to be that. Uh, He's now my boyfriend, and we are now five years together. And, and, <laughs> and also this year, Aldo Ciccolini died. So if I wouldn't have had that call from my mother <laughs> on, on Sunday, uh, and wouldn't have gone to the concert, then I would probably be in a different situation right now. Very good. <laughs> no, no, I, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I share something with you? June 26th is my wedding anniversary. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Cape Town. <laughs> there, there you go. So, what did you make of this? Were nervous? Nervous? Okay. You were you nervous? nervous? Yeah, I was nervous when I was in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Not in, in face, in your body. Always you were doing that. Mm -hmm. This is for nervous. When we, we don't have focus, we, we may make 
But he actually did something really extraordinary, I, I thought. He told a story from his heart. Yes. He told, it's yes. a very, on, yeah, absolutely honest story. Yeah. It was an authentic story, and it was a story that maybe was so private he didn't want to tell people. But what I, the, the advice I would give all of you, and, and sometimes it feels risky to do this, and you went for it, and I admire you for this, to tell something very personal in an interview, on the radio, to an audience, to a board, to some major investors, whatever it might be, to make it personal is perhaps the most convincing thing you'll ever do. Make it, a, make it the story that they'll feel has never been told before, and they're only hearing it for the, f they're only hearing it for the first time. So, in 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 telling us a story which is, has made you very happy, is very personal to you. It made all of us feel very attached to you and very happy for you as well. Yes? yes. Mm -hmm. Th these again are compelling techniques to use when you communicate and use stories. Bravo. Thank you. You're on. You can tell it in Chinese. <laughs> no, I'm quite serious. Don't you think? No, we would. I, I swear we would. <laughs> okay, so three minutes maximum. Maximum. Uh, one minute is enough. <laughs> no, I have the sense you, you will want to speak. I, have, I don't know, I have that sense from you. Anyway, you go. Okay, so I'm Xiaoti and I'm a Chinese <laughs> and I'm a violist who is studying with Nobuko Imai right now here. So, well, so I didn't prepare anything for this speech, so... No, you're not supposed to. Yeah, so I'm just going to maybe talk about me more, like, mm -hmm. about myself. So recently, actually, I'm struggling for something. It's like, um, I'm the person, I thought I'm, a, like, the most simple person ever, but Recently, I got so much like uh, feedbacks from my friends. They say I'm a complicated person, <laughs> and uh, I was like, I've been to. Uh, I mean, I'm being. Uh, I'm searching for the answer for so long. Like, I keep asking myself, what's going on? Why people think that I'm a complicated person? Because I'm just very honest all the time, and I'm talking to you, whatever I think, and I just tell it to you. But uh, then I feel something wrong because. Sometimes I feel when I f I'm facing something, I have several like uh, different answers in my mind, and then I'm just keep looking for the right one. But there is not nothing right actually in the world. Nothing is like a, you know, like a stable forever. Like you know, it's I'm sure for everything. Like because last moment you can like something, but but the second like next moment you don't like it. So I'm always like I feel like I'm always challenging myself. So I'm just squat, struggling for it, so I need help. <laughs> so may I ask, if you are facing this kind of problem, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Someone can answer me? <laughs> I can answer you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ex I exercise. I exercise. I go to the gym. I do. No, I do. Yeah. What? You asked, how do I, how do I deal with it? Yeah. The problem. I go to the gym. 
uh, to run, do weights? I mean, me too. I, I do yeah. it. Does I that help it. you? And then I can run like 5K in, in a row, like mm -hmm. in 30 minutes. But sometimes it doesn't help. Just like something keep like uh, coming up to my mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And then something is clashing all the time. Uh, so I would say go at it, like really, until you get an answer. Even if it's not the answer you want, but yeah, that's my Nearly at the end. Okay, so maybe the important thing is keep trying. Never give up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay, how does she do? I mean, like, she, she covers her hands constantly with mm. her sweater. Yeah, you should pull those up. I don't know there's something, I don't know what it is, but if you go around like that, like peep, people, people, people will probably think either you've got no hands or you've lost a finger. <laughs> you know, just looks, looks a bit odd. Like Game, Game of Thrones season four, when um, Jamie gets his, oh, and he goes around like that all the time. That's what it reminded me of. Anyway, you don't know Game of Thrones. Um, comments for her. So this one, mm, get used to it. You're in public, so do this. Yes, that's good on that one. Okay, what else? Normally in China, you put up your clothes. That means you are going to fight with somebody. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. We're, we're in Madrid. We're okay. Here, no one's gonna fight. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, what was she doing with her eyes? Looking up, and down. It was a bit hectic. Yeah, and then you kept looking at me over here. Because you are in the middle. No, you have to look at everyone. You have to, you have to engage everyone, not the person in the middle, necessarily. How about her voice? How was her voice? No. I project You do? Yeah, it's good projection. Good projection. So you have a good face, and your face is very expressive, don't you think? Yes. Yeah, and you can use your face more. Th this is what uh, what I sense from you mm -hmm. is um, you're lacking a bit of confidence, and you're doing incredibly well, and you're doing incredibly well with the language. I mean, this is this is a major, major achievement. No. <laughs> no, no. Believe me, this is a major achievement, and I think that you need to do some practice with. Um, a mirror practice, mm -hmm. where you're just reading into the mirror and practice with the video. Just as you would be playing scales or studies or a concerto over and over, you need to do that to overcome this feeling that you were expressing to us of, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Other comments? How, how, how was she balanced? How do you think she was doing with her legs? Did you think she was moving a lot? Mm, in the first part, you were like that. Yeah, okay. But, but uh, in, uh, at the end, you were um, talking with the people and you were walking. It was good for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But this is not focused. I think, so. I think that you can move more. You can have that little garden around you and you can. You know, it's not walking around it getting exercise. It's just, <laughs> you're, you're just using that patch because it's your patch to just address everybody with it. And so you, you command that and therefore you command everyone around you. But you did very well. <laughs> Do you have a phone? <laughs> I am Jose Pinto, I play clarinet, and I'm telling a story of um, when Orcs were calling me. So, uh, it was Monday, maybe three months ago, and I was coming from Lisbon in the day before, and in that morning, uh, 
an or uh, orchestra called me. Okay, you can be playing tomorrow in Lisbon. And I was in Porto. Like, I'm moving over here. Uh, and uh, I said, uh, okay, but uh, what I'm going to play, which piece? And uh, they told me, uh, okay, it's not all program, only one piece, but you will be playing Bass Planet and a contemporary piece. And I was, mm, okay, can I see the score? They sent me. And, um, no, I can't do it. It was really difficult. But I didn't want to say no, yeah. <laughs> so I was thinking like one hour. Okay, maybe I have to talk with someone else to help me in this decision. And I went to my teacher and he looked at that. Yeah, okay, chromatic scales, yeah, chromatic scales. Yeah. yeah, you can do it for sure. And I still thinking two hours more. <laughs> Orchestra called me again and I, okay, I didn't see yet, decide yet. But you, you really need to tell us an answer because we have to, if you don't do it, we will call someone. Uh, and my teacher uh, asked me to lunch with him. And he talked to me, you told yes? And I uh, didn't yet. <laughs> uh, but what? You don't want to go? Or are you afraid? Uh, and I was. Uh, and I answered. I want to go, but hey. I don't want to go and leave. <laughs> so I said yes, and um, and I don't have bass it to play, but orchestra has. I went, uh, so I studied in bass clarinet of school, uh, maybe four or five hours in that Monday, and uh, next day at 6 a.m. I catch train and uh, at 10 rehearsal. So I arrived maybe at nine and a half to the place where the rehearsal was, and um, yeah, they have bass players, but not mouthpiece and uh, reeds to play. Okay, how I will do it? Uh, so I went to run to the uh, nearest uh, music store, and it only opened at ten, and I was knocking at the, at the door because it was like a window because I saw someone inside, please open before I need. Uh, they, um, I bought that and went to run like five minutes before the rehearsal. It was okay. <laughs> Maybe I studied more than other musicians the piece, so <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well done. So, how did you do? Yeah, you seem to look at people for reassurance in a way. What? You seem to look at people to, to be reassured. To be real what? To reassured. Reassure. What's reassured? To be, to be I yeah. need to do it. You feel no, you like looked. It looks like that from the outside. Mm. Yeah. But that's a good ask. But not real. <coughs> but that's how, it, that's how it appeared. What other comments do we have? Why? But at the end, mm, no. Yeah, because I was nervous, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you, the only way of overcoming nerves is focus mm. and rehearsing and practicing a lot. You don't, you never use silence yeah. in, in anything you said. You filled every single moment with some sound. You'll see it when you, when you look at the, uh, at the video. But you were, and th that comes out of nervousness. Um, and if you had the opportunity to practice, you would have the opportunity of trying out some new ideas to use silence, and it would actually enhance, enrich the sense of confidence that you want to give all of us. Yeah. yeah? Because it makes it feel like you're remembering the story. Of course, you remember the story as you tell it. But as you do, like, uh, uh, it, we see 
your brain yeah. working <laughs> like, uh, what <laughs> Yeah, yes, that's... <laughs> really a um, characteristic, characteristic that I appreciate in others because for me it's really difficult to be speaking and remembering what I'm going to tell next. Also, like this, also yeah, if you probably you're speaking in Portuguese, maybe it's yeah. easier. Yeah, of course. I'm, given what you're doing with the language, you're doing incredibly well. Other comments? What about... Go on. Uh, at the beginning, I think he uh, was uh, retained the year, so I think he, he needs a little time to, to breathe, huh? Mm -hmm. to keep again yeah. the, the breath. The breath was coming from here, and it's what we were doing in the in the early parts, the the warm up here, and all the the, the that all that stuff we were doing, <laughs> just. No, if you can you can get rid of so much of this tension and nerves by breathing better. So again, that's something to practice and practice consciously here. But as a wind player, you should you should have a lot of that. As a mm. clarinetist. Yes. Yeah? Okay, but you did very well. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are you the last one? Do I have any? <laughs> and you're lost. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Ernei Vargas. Soy costarricense y soy falotista. Mi historia es sobre los 15 días antes de venir a hacer la audición acá, que la verdad fue un poco estresante. Se lo voy a contar ahora por qué. Bueno, resulta que me llega el correo de la escuela en la que dice que, que puedo, puedo venir a hacer la audición el 12 de mayo. Y yo no tenía en ese momento nada de dinero porque la situación que estaba pasando era un poco difícil. Entonces tuve que recurrir a hacer recitales y vender cosas para poder eh, llegar a mil, e mil euros más o menos. Que era lo que estaba costando el pasaje en ese momento. O sea, faltaba, faltaba muy poco tiempo y entonces era muy caro. Entonces bueno, hicimos esto y faltando una semana no tenía ni la mitad tenía muy poco dinero. Entonces un profesor de la orquesta, de la Orquesta Histórica Nacional de Costa Rica, se dio cuenta que yo andaba en esto y me dijo, el jueves, el jueves que era como, a ver, faltaban unos días así para, para venir acá a, a hacer la audición, va a haber un ensayo general con el coro y la orquesta. A mí me parece que si usted va y dice lo que está pasando, que usted va a ir a hacer la audición a Reina Sofía y ellos lo van a apoyar, o sea, es muy probable. Entonces, así fue. Me llegó una cajita, una cajita de zapatos, me preparé, le hice un hueco. Y ahí estaba yo frente a toda esa gente que, bueno, uno admira y, y realmente eso le produce a uno como mucho nervio. Estaba yo pálido, estaba pálido, pálido. O sea, nunca me había sentido así, ni en audición me sentí tan nervioso. Fue, fue demasiado. Entonces... Les dije, les expliqué la situación, que venía para acá y fue realmente fue impactante para mí ver cómo hay tanta gente que a uno lo quiere ayudar. Uno a veces piensa como que está solo, que no, que no va a suceder, pero ver la solidaridad de todas, las, todas esas personas que me daban un euro, dos euros, diez euros, cien euros, alguna persona me dio hasta cien euros. Realmente como que me enseñó mucho de que, de que hay que buscar, hay que, hay que pedir, no hay que tener el miedo de eso. Y que hay, al mismo tiempo, al hacer esto, creé muchos contactos y la gente se interesó como por mí en lo que yo estaba haciendo. Y fue muy bonito compartir con otros músicos, con los del coro, que yo en mi vida los había conocido, la experiencia. Y bueno, después, claro, les agradecí mucho y creo que ahora... Veo esta cuestión del agradecimiento de una manera totalmente diferente después de haber hecho eso. Hold on, hold on. Okay, comments? Do you like him? Yes. yes. What did you like? He was Less. really speaking by heart. Mm -hmm. yes. It really talks to me. Yes? Yes. Yes. Because yes. you could see that like, when he started being more personal and telling about the other people, then his eyes 
went a little bit more red and more mm -hmm. wet, and then that was, it's like, you just needed, we needed the music behind it, and then we were mm -hmm. crying, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And we were like, oh. ¿Cómo se dice Moraleja? Sí, como Moraleja. Enseñanza. The thing you learn after you heard the story, what's the name of that? Reflection? Reflection. Yeah, reflection. Reflection. Yeah. What else did you like? Great face. He yes. started using his face when he relaxed. Yeah. Yes. It, it was it was really nice. Well, yeah. how how? He yes, the box. at the beginning, yeah. at the beginning, he was only focusing in one person. Yeah. You you were to me, and you you talk uh, the other people, uh, but at the beginning you were focusing in one person with mm -hmm. your body. Well, I feel like you went you you felt more comfortable like in the middle and then. Yeah. After after a while, it was like you could talk for hours. You had no trouble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like when you felt the acceptation of the public, like we were having fun with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you felt comfortable. Yeah, now that's a really, that's one of the best compliments you can give somebody, having fun with them. Because yeah. if you're having fun with somebody, you've got a bond, you, you like them, you want to be with them, you don't want them to stop. And that's, again, when you're using communication, storytelling with audiences through to raising money, having that ability is really, really strong. Yes. did very well. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay, so my name is Enrique Lapa. I play piano and I pretend to be a pianist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will tell a history, but it's not about me. I think it's a good one. History is about my grandfather. Yeah, I never met him, but it's an history told by my, my grandmother. Because originally all my family is from Andalusia, but we all live in Valencia. And I was asking my grandmother, why we live in Valencia? And she told me that at the beginning, at the time of the uh, civil war in, in Valencia, my, father, my grandfather had to fight in that civil war. But uh, they were in the Republican band, so Valencia was the last Republican band in Spain. So all, the, all my family moved to Valencia, but my, father had, my grandfather had to stay there to fight against the fascists. Let's call it like this. Uh, then, he had the bad luck to be cut, so he was sent to be killed. And the way they were killing at that time is they were making like four or five lines of ten persons, and one person from behind was shooting with this, how you call it, this? Machine, machine gun? Machine gun. Like, yeah. So he was lucky to be in the last line. So, uh, of course, when the guy be begins to, to shoot, everybody be starts to run. It was in the middle of the forest. So. Uh, he was, he did it, he survived, he was so lucky, but he was having seven shots in his back. Yeah. Oh. So then he spent two weeks on his way to Valencia to, to be together with my, with my family again. And he only made it because he was helped by the families he, he, he was finding in the way. It didn't depend which political size they were. Uh, also in the chart, he was like, uh, well, he made it and he lived some more years in Valencia and he established there and he had his family there. And I think it's important to tell his, his history right now because now we think that we are living in a different time in Spain. We are in the European Union, we don't know what is starving about. And is this refugees thing now, is war in Syria? It's like we don't want to upset them, but people from the Arab countries cannot work good in Spain because we are not accepting them at all. So I think it's good to remain that kind of history, that kind of things, because it didn't happen to us that long ago. It is real history told by my grandmother. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a great story, great story. Yeah. So what did we make of that one? I'm so nervous. <laughs>
<laughs> Didn't look nervous. What did you think? I, I loved it. It was like a BBC commercial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In a very yeah. good way. Yeah. Like, yeah, because he has like... Could you see the images? I started seeing yes. the, the yeah, forest yeah, and, and the ch- machine gunning and then I mean, running with bullets in his back. Yeah. I, no, it was, it was yeah. very strong. Yeah, it was a very good film. What else? He had kind of a, like Obama style, you know? Yeah. <laughs> stopping, <laughs> yes. stopping every now and then in sentences yeah. and that's always very good. Because I was trying to remember that. Oh. <laughs> but then, it, yeah, you did it very well. But what, what I took away from the story was that and this is just me, my, I'm projecting onto you. What I took away was that this is somebody you never met, mm-hmm. this is somebody you've discovered in your life, mm-hmm. and his story touches you. Yeah. Very strongly. Yes. So there was this very big emotional yeah, it mattered. content. It mattered, to, yes, that's, that, I'm struggling for that word. It, it mattered to him. And that's, I, I felt came across very, very strongly, yeah? I've got one thing I want you to try. Mm-hmm. All of us are going to stay up here. I want you to go down to the bottom of the room and speak to us with stronger projection. Uh huh. Because I have like a very low projection. Yeah, you're, you're very... Often when people get nervous, they, their voice goes up. It goes sort of like, sort of up there. And, and it, it's a, a little bit like um, when you see... Uh, it, it's, it's what people do when, when they're, they're playing a, a basketball and they put the ball into the, the net and it's high like this. And it's a big stretch for them. That, so that's, I felt was a little bit what you're doing with your, mm-hmm. with your voice. And what you need to be doing yeah. is more, you know when you, you roll the ball like this, well, I forget what that game is called, you Ooh, roll it, bowling. Yeah? yeah? Bowling, you need to bowl your voice. So relax it more and make it okay. nice and rumbly, darker, uh-huh. and you have a richer voice, I think. Yeah. And then project that from down there. What do the singers think? Yeah? yeah? yeah. That makes sense? Yes. Okay, so you go down to the bottom there. We'll turn around and look at you and just start your story again. And you've got to project all the way to us. Not from, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe so we can see see your legs. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Great. Okay, which, uh, yeah. It was the history about my grandfather. It's better like, like this. What do you think? Yes. Yeah. Maybe it's more. lower, actually. The voice yeah. is lower. It's lower. Just a bit lower. Yeah. Relax into your voice. Yeah. Okay, so this was an history told by my grandmother. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah, go. A yeah. bit more. Yeah, because uh, my family is based in Valencia, but originally all my family came from Andalusia, so I didn't know why, so I asked my grandmother to tell me that history. I'm becoming higher now. You, you're, you're starting to get tense again. Yeah. I think, think about your rhythm as well. Mm-hmm. What rhythm is comfortable mm-hmm. for you? Don't rush it. You, you can go a little bit slower. Yeah. Just start it one more time. This is good. And think about the ends of your words. <laughs> think about the ends of your words. If you, if you ever listen to English actors, particularly in Game of Thrones, they always pronounce the end of a word. So if they, you, if they say a word like stalk, uh, they don't say the, the Americans will say stock. And you say, what? Stock. And the English actor will always say stalk. Stalk. So think about the ends of your words. I always start with the ends of the words rather than the beginnings of words. Because if you can do that, you will understand, people will understand you better. It will be clearer. Okay, you stay there. Let's all go down to the other end of the room now and, and take some seats with you. Well, just get yourself comfortable. So who, who were the brave people who said that they could do, uh, they could do uh, an elevator speech? Yeah? Okay. Come and join me. Let's see, well, come and join me. Yeah. 
So just to remind you about, about elevator speeches uh, and why they're important and why you should prepare for them, an elevator speech is called an elevator speech because the average length of time people have in an elevator is 30 seconds. And it also happens to be the average amount of time that you will get to make an impression on somebody important. So it's an elevator speech for that, for that reason. You can never improvise an elevator speech. It is much too complicated and it is much too demanding. It demands that all the work that we did last week when you were filling in your questionnaire about who you are, what you want to do uh, with your lives, what you want to do with music, the impact you want to make on the world, all of that is thought through. That's really in your head. That's the basis of, of, of your preparation. You then need to prepare what is it that I want to happen at the end of these 30 seconds. Uh, is it, I'm going to run through this as fast as I can and he's going to understand absolutely everything I've ever done and all the, all the concerts I've done and uh, sort of you being sick on someone, you know. Uh. Because the end of it should be that you get the person's interest for another meeting. That's your objective. So the 30 seconds is really to inspire confidence with your personality, with your charm, with your 30 seconds worth of story, <laughs> and for you to say, here's my card. And then the greatest accolade, the greatest compliment to you is if they say, oh, Cute. here's my yeah. card, give me a call, which gives you a free entrance, only once, <laughs> a free entrance to his office or her office, so that you can get 20 minutes of their time. Always say that, I just need 20 minutes of your time. I need some advice. That's, that's my template for you all. Just need 20 minutes of your time just for some advice. Very rarely have I ever found anyone say no to that. Very rarely. The other thing is um, you have to research the person that you are targeting. So let's say you've given a concert, you've been invited to a post-concert reception. I'm sure that happens to all of you. Uh, and we, you should say to the organizer, who's going to be there? And if they say, well, um, let me think. Uh, Zubin Mehta, Daniel Barenboim, the artistic director of the Salzburg Festival and the head of the South Bank in London, you think, well, those are going to be my four top targets. But you, what you've done is you've, you have asked the right question. Who's going to be there? What's in it for me? Who should I be rubbing shoulders with? Who can I get another opportunity with and extend my network? So whoever you have imagined you are going to be presenting to in just a second, um, and you'll be going to present it to me. So it can either be me or it can be uh, fictitious me, <laughs> or it can be Zubin Mehta or whoever, but you need to have researched that person. You need to know about their career, their lives, and about them personally. How many children they've had, whether they have uh, been divorced recently, if they've had any major awards, what recordings did they put out, or a ton of stuff, maybe 2% of which you'll use. But you've got it there. It's like ammunition in your back pocket that you can use. It puts you in a really strong position. It makes you in control of the situation. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? So who am I? President of the Rossini Opera, the, uh, Opera Festival. Okay, and what do you know about me? Well, you are the responsible for all the critical editions of the last 20 years of every Rossini Opera mm -hmm. that is being played all around the world. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, you usually conduct mm -hmm. during the ROF, the festival. Uh, you tour the world doing master classes mm -hmm. about Rossini. Uh, what else? Mm. Am I married? No. Yes. I've heard you say No, not am I married. No, uh, I, I'm, I'm this, fic I'm this <laughs> Rossini guy. Yes, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Rossini guy, is he married? I don't think so. Okay. 
Is he divorced? I think he's gay, actually. Yeah. Okay. Said that. But no, and I don't think he has a boyfriend. Okay. Does he have children? No. Okay. Does his mother, is his mother still alive? Not as far as I know. He's very old. Okay. Does he have brothers and sisters? All this information, I don't know. And I don't Does know. he have any, did he, has he been given any awards recently? No. I don't, I, I don't remember. I don't think so, but no. I just ask, ask those things because if you can, um, if you can start with flattery, mm. someone who's influential, someone who's in a senior position, somebody who is very senior, flattery is the oxygen of their lives. <laughs> they like it. They really like it. And they expect it. <laughs> and it's like uh, in, the, in the 17th century, you would take your hat and do that. You're, you are acknowledging them for who they are. So you're doing this. Oh, that's my leg, that. <laughs> uh, you're, you're acknowledging them. You're being very respectful to them. And you're flattering them. And they feel really great about it. If I, if I said to you, you know, I heard you play that late Schubert sonata last week. One of the best performances of the last movie I have ever heard. How do you feel? Great. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Really? Yeah? If I say to you, the Gluck I heard you sing, Que uh, Faro Sensei Uredice, I was touched my heart. Thank you so much. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. Use it. So, so I'm old, so I'm in, in my 80s. I'm going to be seated for this one. So I have, suddenly this, there's a parting of the ways. Yes. Do you, do you want to film this? Do you want it filmed? Yes. Yep. But actually I have a question. Yep. I'll tell you with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Why um, do we have to know something like a person know about a person? Like how many children they have or, you know, those kind of person know, like private? What's the answer? if you could use it to start and like drag the eyes, that's always much easier. Yeah, but the, pro the problem is like uh, the first time you are meeting somebody and then you are asking, you are talking about like his life, like personal life, I, I feel it's a little weird. I, I've had, uh, I've been at receptions where somebody's come up to me that I don't know and they, they've said to me, I understand your son's doing very well in New York. <laughs> I've been researched. And I say, oh, thank you. And I mean, my, I love my son, so I immediately respond to that. Is that too personal? No, I think it's clever. I respect that. Yeah? It shows interest. It, show, it shows interest. It shows intelligence. It shows you're serious. It sh I can understand. I know where you live. <laughs> yeah, if you, say, I'm going, if you say, OK, to build on that, yes, you're right. If you say, I'm going to be stalking you for the next three months, not good, okay? Not a good idea. You're not going to get much work on, on that one. Um, so, yes, there's a line to be, to be drawn in this. Was, you won't be saying, look, I've got pictures of you when you were 16. You should be really ashamed. <laughs> I, I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a very, very quick s story. Well, I was being interviewed for, for a job years ago, and uh, I really researched the committee that I was going to be meeting. And I researched, in particular, the, the chair of the committee. And he was, a China, he was a Chinese person, Chinaman. And he was very high up. He was very, very rich, multimillionaire. And I discovered, I researched him for about four hours. And it turned out that when he was eight years old, he had been kidnapped by pirates. And they had held him for four weeks until his ransom was paid. I thought this was fantastic. So at a particular moment, in the interview, I shared this information with the whole committee. He went red, <laughs> red as could be. And he said, and he was angry. He said, where did you find that out? <laughs> and to your point, I, I didn't realize. I thought I was being interested. Uh, <laughs> I'd gone over a line somewhere. He did not want people to know that. It was something, it wasn't an adventure, a Disney adventure. It was something that he was ashamed of. Okay, I'm going to be seated for this. Yes. You've got your 30 seconds coming up. Now. Oh, sorry. Almost now.
Good evening, Maestro Zeda. My name is Pablo Martinez. I'm very pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, I've been loving every single edition you've done from every opera, uh, Rossini opera you, I've been singing for the last 10 years. I'm a light lyric tenor. I specialize in your repertoire and I would love for you to hear me out in an audition. Is that how you're going to finish it? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. 30 seconds are very... He's like... <laughs> No. See, I, I think, and that was not 30 seconds, it was about, uh, it was about 15 to 20 seconds, that one. See, you're, you're rushing it. Yes. You're rushing it. I'm very it. much this comfortable in, in Spanish than I am in English. Then you, why didn't you do it in Spanish and people can because translate? Because Alfredo Seda doesn't speak in Spanish. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, your English is excellent, I think. I, I think what you should be doing is, uh, you're complimenting very well. Yes. And then you should be saying, um, my teacher, you probably know my teacher. Always throw a teacher in. I mean, you, you have some famous teachers here. You know, yes. People should know them. Throw your teacher in. They, they, they say, my, ah, okay. yeah, my, my, teach, my teacher, who always speaks so, so highly of you, um, suggested that maybe I could uh, ask for a little of your time yes. and you could advise me on some of the roles I'm thinking of singing. Okay. So... You've, you've gone for the opportunity then of seeing him. That's your op your yes. objective is not for him to say, "Yeah, come come and sing to me next week." You won't get it on on that yeah. thirty seconds. But if you create the opportunity to have twenty minutes with him the following week, yeah. you'll 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 nail a, um, an opportunity uh, then. Yes. You, you got it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's try it again. Yes, I have. What do you? Sorry, what other thoughts on this one? I think it's talk someone and, yeah. and not talk, 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 talk. You need also to hear what the other people are saying. I think that's very important for me, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. Start talking over someone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, in, my, in my career, I've raised uh, a lot of money uh, for the institutions that I've run. And uh, one of the ways I've gone about raising money is uh, by listening. Mm -hmm. Listening to the people who I want, who I want to give, uh, who I want, to what do I want to say? To, to get money from, that's, that's the <laughs> phrase. To, to get money from. Um, and I often get invited to these millionaires' houses, the one percenter houses, and you can be absolutely rest assured that they always have an art collection. They always collect art, expensive art. So the first thing you do is you go in and say, oh, that's absolutely gorgeous. Where did you, where did you get that? That's, that's really that's so it speaks to me the colors and the, the line the, and they'll come up and they'll tell you its story yeah. and then for the next half an hour they're going to be speaking to you and in speaking to you they're establishing a bond mm -hmm. yeah. but that's for a session on how you use the 20 minutes this session is on <laughs> the yeah. first 30 seconds okay good evening master Zappa. Hello. Uh, I'm Pablo Martinez. Hello, I've Pablo. I've been working with Julio for the last two months. He's one of your pianists for all the roles. And he told me that I should talk to you about advice, about what roles should I sing. I would like if you would have some time for me. It's too short again. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it? It's not, you know, I feel, no, I feel, I, because I, I don't know, yeah, I feel the 30 seconds are like taking away, so I think I don't have enough time. You've, got, you've actually got twice as much time as you think you've got. Yes. Tell some of your story. Go back to the work that you did last week, yes. where you're talking about yourself, who you are, your traits, your qualities, your, your skills, yes. what you want to do. Give him the essence of who you are mm. in a very authentic way. Yes. Just think about it for a moment. Why don't you think about it? Let's give somebody else an opportunity. Yes. Who else said yes? Who's now regretting it? <laughs> you said yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but uh, well, I, I, I didn't prepare something specifically for a person. So ah, you need to prepare it for a person. Ah, okay. I, Absolutely. I so. Yeah. Okay. It was the third person who said yes. Well, I, I thought about, but I actually didn't prepare like something structured. Okay. Because, yeah. Uh, your elevator pitch, uh, you don't know who is the person. Uh, maybe 
you are going to meet. You should. You have to know who you're going to meet. You have to research the event that you're going to. You have to ask the question, who will be there? Absolutely, it's interesting. Because just say, for example, we were in the concert of Daniel Barenboim. He was playing in Abitur in Amsterdam. Uh, for a moment, I was thinking like, to prepare a <laughs> no, Abitur sure. speech, but it was a bit he didn't like, uh, like spoke with the people. See, somebody, let's do, deal with an, uh, uh, an opportunity like Dar Daniel Barenboim being in town. Daniel Barenboim, world famous pianist and conductor, he will probably have an entourage. Yeah, entourage? Entourage, yeah. what is okay. He'll have. Assistant. Yeah. 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 Th those people. Yeah. Do you know? Do you understand? Like a manager as well? Yeah, so underneath a manager. An assistant. Okay, an, ass an assistant of some order. A coordinator, an assistant. Six maybe hours. maybe one or two of those people. Yeah. Somebody like that. Somebody who arranges his hotels, who arranges his car, and all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I call those people the gatekeepers. Yeah, they're the gatekeepers. Now they may not be very senior. They may appear not to be very important, but they control opportunity. If somebody is in control of Daniel Barenboim's calendar, his diary, where he's at, they're really powerful. So the way I would research an opportunity like that is that Daniel Barenboim is going to be in town. Uh, who's promoting the concert? Uh, where might he be staying? Trying to make contact with um, whoever is looking after him. And then charming that gatekeeper so that you say to him, I just need 30 seconds of his time. That's all. Okay. Please. The thing with that kind of really famous Mm -hmm. How do you approach them? Because I think they are so used to listen every day, like perhaps 100 persons mm -hmm. are asking for help. Yeah. Um, well, what, what you want them to do at the end of the day is to listen to you play. They get so many requests for that, hundreds and hundreds of requests, which they will shortlist. They will shortlist it. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was in Boston, I used to work a lot with the Boston Symphony Orchestra. I used to have a good relationship with the artistic administrator of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Now, the, uh, the artistic administrator of the Boston Symphony Orchestra is not the head guy. He's not even the assistant head guy. He's a middle manager. But he controls the time of all the visiting conductors and the music director. So let's say Daniel Barenboim was coming to conduct the BSO. I might have three young artists that I particularly want him to hear. Uh -huh. I'll phone him up and I'll say, you know, uh, he's in town. If you'd like to come over, uh, we'll put the red, out, the red carpet out for him and we'll give him a glorious lunch. And, uh, and so I'm investing in my artists as a result of that. And uh, there are three people that I would very much like him to listen to. Only 20, 30 minutes each. Um, and then time is, is his own. Could, could he do that? I would guarantee that I would be successful. How much work came out of that? I would say one out of ten. One out of ten. You're fishing and you're losing a lot of bait, but it doesn't matter because you have to keep fishing. You have to keep putting people out there. You have to keep putting yourself out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But research and creating the opportunity. Uh, what's, the, what's the definition of luck? The definition of luck is the confluence, the coming together of planning and opportunity. Mm -hmm. Planning and opportunity. It doesn't just happen. You've got to really work at being lucky. So I'm not going to put you under pressure now, because I've got a train to catch. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know. But next time, shall we continue with this 30-second elevator speech? Yes.
I'll start with you next time, and then everyone will have the opportunity to do that. Then I'd like you to research the board of the Reina Sofia School of Music here in Madrid, and we'll do some networking exercises. How does that sound? Yeah? Okay, then I shall see you on Monday.